Mira, where are you? Help me, Mike. Help me, Mike. Help me. Night after night, I'm searching for Rita in the dark world, but something unspeakable starts chasing me. I never make it back through the portal in time. It's been more than a year since I foiled the Ancients' plans to grow an alien embryo in my brain, and still the dark world haunts me. Rita's murder is just the latest reminder that no place is safe from the darkness. Not even my hometown. Doors open. Your mother let me in, Dawson. I had some more questions to ask you about the murder. Am I a suspect, Sheriff? Now we have to look at everybody, Dawson. Especially everyone who was close to Rita. Rita and I weren't that close, Sheriff. Now we all know you and Rita were an item back in high school. That was 15 years ago. I moved away and only came back recently. Yes, we checked. You headed up an advertising agency in Frisco. But you've been living with your mother for the past year. Rita and I didn't really see each other much since I moved back home. Just how much contact did you have with her? Look, we only saw each other a few times. I see. Were you having a relationship? I asked her out a few times, but she was always too busy with the library and stuff. What sort of stuff? She always had excuses for not going out with me. What kinds of excuses? She had some kind of reading group she always went to. And did you ever attend one of these reading group meetings? No. I don't like being around other people these days. So, you were always trying to get alone with her. Well, I sort of wanted to have a relationship, but Rita didn't. And that's why you killed her. I didn't kill her. If you didn't kill her, Dawson, why are you getting so upset? Didn't we go all over this before? Yes, but that was last week and you left out a lot. The witnesses said you and Rita left the banquet together. What happened when you two were alone? Look, I don't remember being alone with Rita that night. I don't remember anything. I must have gotten drunk. Is that so? People said they heard you two arguing outside the school building. Look, Sheriff, I'm going to be late for my doctor appointment. I know all about your sessions with Dr. Sims, but the mayor wants you to make time to meet with the feds later. Feds? You mean the FBI? That's right. I don't much like the idea of them trampling over my turf, but the mayor wants me to bring him in. What's Mayor Fleming's interest in Rita's murder? Eh, he wants this case solved quickly with the election coming up and all. Seems he has some friends at the Bureau and believe... I wish I had something to tell you, Sheriff. I really do. Well, if you remember anything, see me down at the station. But your memory had better return by today or things won't look good for you. I won this fencing trophy during high school. It's been a long time since I've done any fencing. It's been a long time since I've done much of anything. Strange. It's a sunny day, but it still feels gloomy. Smells good in here. 
Mom must be cooking something special. I'm not hungry now. Maybe I'll... Mom looks pretty good considering all she's been through. Morning, Mom. So it takes the sheriff to wake you up, Mike? I don't feel like talking about the sheriff, Mom. Fine. You never feel like talking. You know, you woke me up with all those pots banging. Sorry, Mike, but it's time that you got up. The sun has been shining for hours. Gosh, Mom, you treat me like I'm in high school again. Well, then start acting your age. You came home to recover from your nervous breakdown, which is fine, but you've been here for a year now. When are you going back to your job? But I have an extended sick leave for as long as I need it. Well, I think you've recovered from whatever it was. I don't know what happened to you in that old house in California, but surely it couldn't have been that bad. Go easy on me. What I went through last year was far worse than anything you could imagine. I've lost a husband and a sister to cancer. Your father left me no insurance money and I have arthritis. You don't see me checking into a mental hospital with a nervous breakdown. You're ashamed of me, aren't you? No, son, I'm not ashamed of you. I just wish I knew what was bothering you. You were always full of energy and life. Since that nervous breakdown, all you do is stare at the walls. I'm having a hard time getting motivated. You know, Mike, you're late for your doctor appointment. You're never going to snap out of your depression unless you see the doctor. And after that, I'd like you to do some errands for me. But I've got things to do today, Mom. Like what? You don't do a damn thing around here anymore. I'm starting to get a headache. Well, that's what your medicine is for. You know where to find it. By the way, Mom, thanks for taking care of me this past year. I love you, Mike. I just want you to get well again. When I was a kid, my family used to gather here to watch television. On giving hot lunches to the school children. In other parts of the country, law enforcement officials are still bewildered about the murder of local librarian Rita Scanlon last week after the high school reunion. When asked about potential suspects, Sheriff Willard Butler replied, Michael. You and your kind are in grave danger once again. The ancients have returned. I am sending something to assist you. You must act quickly. Warn that this is the second local death this year and residents should always be alert. On the national news scene... There's someone at the front door. Ticket for a traveling carnival over in the park. My old 35 millimeter camera. There's only one shot left on this roll. Whenever I look at one of these smiley face magnets, I wonder what it's smiling at. This ticket will admit me to the traveling carnival in the park. Hey, that's Jack. He likes to think he's tough for that motorcycle and all, but he's about the only new friend I've made since I returned home. Well, are you just gonna stand there gaping at me, Mikey boy, or are you gonna take a load off your feet? What brings you here, Jack? My motorcycle, dumb cough. You need to have your ears checked. Actually, I stopped by because I saw the sheriff's patrol car drive off. I was worried about my favorite recovering mental case. The sheriff thinks I murdered Rita. Yeah, I know. I overheard Deputy Brown talking in the diner. You're the number one suspect. What should I do? Not to worry, Mikey boy. I've been giving your situation some thought, and I think there are some things Sheriff Butler overlooked. You know, Jack, I still can't remember what happened that night. Nothing happened. You know that, and I know that. It's hopeless. 
I feel like the biggest patsy since Oswald. Don't worry, we'll get you out of this mess. Then we can party. I'm too hungry to think right now, Jack. How about joining me at the diner? I don't think I'm very welcome there. Not after that stunt I pulled with Jukebox. Let's meet here after you've done stuffing your face. I've got an appointment with Dr. Sims soon. Let's get together afterwards. You're seeing that, Quack? Don't waste your time with that head shrinker. Listen to your old pal Jack instead. Okay, we'll meet here after you're done with Dr. Sigmund Fraud. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for believing me. Now, don't get all mushy on me. I'll meet you right here after your doctor's appointment. Until then, hang loose. Even though I grew up in this town, I still find that a map helps me get to places quickly. I've been finding reasons to avoid going to Dr. Sims' office during the past week. Rita used to live just around the corner. It's locked. The sign says that the hardware store will be closed for the next two weeks. The guy who runs a hardware store, he doesn't keep his house in very good shape. Nice lawn, though. Lawn furniture on the roof? That's just too bizarre. Howdy, Paul. Can I talk to you? Sure, Mike. I'm just watering my lawn here. So how's the hardware store business? Great. I've given myself a vacation for the first time in about three years. The store is closed right now. I'm just going to relax and water my lawn for the next week or two. Pretty terrible news about the murder. It certainly was. The second murder this year. I don't know what's going on in this town anymore. What do you know about a second murder? Old man Ramirez died in a fire. Some say it was an accident, but I think he was done in. A real shame. He was a steady customer at the hardware store. Like to read, too. Does your lawn need that much water? It's dry. It's always dry. Gotta get it ready. You know how it is. It's nice to have a pretty lawn. I'll have a big water bill, but I don't care. As long as it keeps pumping, I'll keep watering. Do you know of anything else strange going on in town? No. Why do you ask? Nothing ever happens here. The town is full of cobwebs and stagnation. It needs a good cleansing. Until the murders, the place was just too quiet. I was wondering how well you knew Rita Scanlon. Rita? Well, she lives, uh, lived across the street. We'd wave to each other. Why? Was she a friend of yours? We went to high school together a few years back. Yes? I didn't really know her back then. She moved in over there about eight years ago, but I didn't talk to her much. Paul, why is there lawn furniture on your roof? I had to move it out of the way. Didn't want it to get rusty with the watering and all. Uh, I think I have to leave now. You take real good care of yourself, Paul. Take care of yourself, Mike. Why is the deputy standing guard in front of Rita's house? She wasn't killed at home. There must be some evidence inside that the police are protecting. Hi, Deputy Brown. What's new? Oh, uh, 
Hello, Mike. What are you doing here? You look like you're on guard duty. I'm keeping watch over Rita Scanlon's house. A week after the murder? I'm just following orders, Mike. I'm not supposed to let anyone in. We've had problems with vandalism before. What for? What's in there? Not a thing. But we need to keep Rita's house intact until the FBI comes. They'll want to go over it with a fine tooth comb. When's your shift over? Who knows? We've been working overtime at the sheriff's office ever since the body was discovered. This case is being given top priority. Unless there's an emergency or something, I have to stay put. So how's the murder investigation going? Come on, Mike. You know I shouldn't be talking to you about that. Go on now, let me do my job. Hank's diner in the pool hall next door played a large part in my teenage years. I took Rita to the diner on our first date when we were both juniors in high school. Hank's diner isn't the swinging place it used to be, but Hank still does enough business to keep the place going. How's it going, Hank? Eh, my back's been acting up. But otherwise, not too bad. How are you, Mike? I'm starving. What have you got to eat around here? Like you haven't seen my menu a thousand times. What are you hungry for? Ham and eggs, grits, pancakes? Pancakes? Rita and I used to come here for pancakes after church. You two were quite an item back when you were in high school. Shame about what happened to her. Real tragedy. Who do you think murdered Rita? Oh, I can't imagine it was anyone from around here. But he's one sick dude, whoever he is. Sick? Murder isn't a disease. It's evil. Relax, Mike. It's just a figure of speech. I don't think anyone's going to show the killer any compassion when they catch up with him. Have you heard any more about the investigation? Deputy Brown stopped by to get some coffee and donuts on his way to Rita's place. He was saying that the FBI might be called in. Doc Larson was telling us some pretty grisly stuff. What did Doc Larson have to say? He wouldn't go into any details because he wants to keep certain things from the public. I haven't seen Doc Larson so excited since that other murder. What other murder? Old man Ramirez. He died in a fire a few weeks back and left his wife a very rich widow. Funny how Rita died so close to his house. Rita was murdered in a public park. How could they keep any details secret? Doc Larson had her body moved to the morgue before dawn. Deputy Brown said the sheriff wasn't too happy about that. Didn't give him much of a chance to examine the crime scene first. I lost my appetite. You don't look well, Mike. Why don't you go out for a walk? Nice day for it. I think I'll just do that, Hank. See you later. Take care, Mike. There's Jimmy Gardner and Melissa Fleming. Jimmy's the type of loser I'd expect to see in a place like this. But it's surprising to find the mayor's wife here. What's up, Gardner? What do you want, doofus? How about a game of pool? Cut the crap, Dawson. We might have been friends once, but that was a long time ago. We were friends in high school. Why are you so angry with me now? Let's just say that you and I don't share the same interests anymore. What happened?
happened to you? You were a straight-A student until you dropped out. I guess I'm just the town's bad seed. You went off to college and joined the establishment. I stayed here and became a statistic. You're a real tough guy now, aren't you, Jimmy? You got that right, chump. I'm the local wise guy, so stay out of my way. I hear that your interests these days aren't exactly on the up and up. So what? There's a lot going on in this town that ain't exactly on the up and up. Tell me, Jimmy, how come the sheriff leaves you alone? That's easy in this town. That flatfoot doesn't know his butt from an armadillo. But I got the goods on him. He doesn't bother me. Was the sheriff involved in some sort of scandal? Forget it, Dawson. If I tell you, you'll spread it all over town. Then what good would it do me? Maybe I should go. Yeah, get out before I throw you out. Hi, Melissa. Have you got time to talk? Well, well, well. Look what the cat dragged in. When did you take up smoking? Don't you know it's bad for your health? Yeah. Well, there's lots of things that are bad for your health. So what are you doing here in the pool hall? Seeing Jimmy? What are you insinuating? I'm a married woman, I'll have you know. I just came in here for a smoke. Well, you did used to date Jimmy back when you were a cheerleader. That was a long time ago. We're not the same people we were in high school, you know. I heard that you married Mayor Fleming. He used to be my dad's partner, you know. Oh, please don't give me that. He's old enough to be my father routine. I've heard it all. Poor Rita. It's a shame what happened to her. Poor Rita? <laughs> that little tramp had it coming to her. How can you say such things about Rita? Forget it, Dawson. Forget I even said it. Now buzz off. The mayor campaigned on how he was going to rid our streets of the homeless, but I guess they just got driven into sheds like this. Another evil that's been hidden but still exists. I found an old coat hanger. This might be useful. I once read a story about how a thief used a wire to open a lock. It's hard to believe that someone could live in this dilapidated old shed. This is the most bizarre collection of junk I've ever seen. Civic Center. We used to joke about the sheriff's office, courthouse, and morgue all being next door to each other. First they tie them, then they try them, then they fry them. Andy and Barney would be right at home here. But this ain't Mayberry, and unless I can get the sheriff off my back, there ain't going to be a happy sitcom ending. I bet the sheriff has all sorts of dirty little secrets hidden in his desk. I always thought of myself as a liberal thought of only the police having firearms frightens me. I wouldn't be surprised to find something inside this filing cabinet linking Sheriff Butler to the dark world. It's a slow day at the jail, but if I don't solve the murder soon, business might pick up. Reading a girly magazine? What a slime ball! The police in Woodland Hills were under the Ancients' control. I wonder if they've seized control of Sheriff Butler, too. Hi, Sheriff. I just came in to get out of the heat. 
Dawson, I was hoping that you'd show up. You're in your office on weekends too, huh? That's right, Dawson. I'm a dedicated public servant. I'm gonna stay right here until we get that murder solved. Unless there's an emergency, of course. Well, I think I'll be going now. You know, Dawson, sooner or later you're gonna make a mistake. And then I'm gonna lock you up for the rest of your natural life. So, how's the murder investigation going, Sheriff? You know, Dawson, they say killers follow the investigations of their own crimes just for the thrill. I heard rumors about the condition of Rita's body. Rumors? What kind of rumors? There was a rumor going around that the body was mutilated. I'll tell you one thing. Doc Larson was having himself a field day, happier than a pig in slop. But I can't reveal details. We have to withhold specific information that only the killer would know. Uh, Dawson? You make it sound like Doc Larson enjoyed seeing Rita's mutilated body. I tell you, I've never seen the man so excited. He could hardly wait to have the body bundled up and sent off to the morgue. Doc Larson's one strange guy. Well, you know he was kicked off a of hospital staff, don't you? Something about fooling around with some patient in the hospital morgue. But I shouldn't spread rumors. Do you still think I'm the one who killed Rita? I can't think of anyone else who makes a better suspect. I tell you, if I had one good hard piece of evidence against you, I'd have you behind bars so fast your head would spin. Why do you let a thug like Jimmy Gardner run around? Does he have something on you? Shut your mouth, Dawson. You're pissing me off. Well, I think I'll be going now. Anytime you feel like confessing, Dawson, you come right back. I'll be here. been set up here in the park for more than a week now. I wonder when it's going to finally open. I haven't been past the Ramirez Mansion in a long time. It's one of the town's oldest landmarks. They used to own all of the land around the park before they donated it to the town. Excuse me, Mrs. Ramirez. May I talk to you? Yes, young man. What do you want? I just heard about how Mr. Ramirez died. I want to express my condolences. Thank you. It was a terrible tragedy. I don't know how I'll go on without my dear husband. I suppose that Sheriff Butler was in charge of investigating the fire. Yes, and he found nothing to indicate foul play despite what the insurance company says. I'm sorry that I never had an opportunity to meet your husband. Why, I'm surprised. He was the most prominent attorney in town. A very successful man and a charitable one, too. If he had lived, I have no doubt he would have eventually donated all his wealth to various noble causes. Thank you, Mrs. Ramirez. I appreciate your time. God be with you, young man. Mrs. Ramirez is obviously a God-fearing woman, and she wants everyone to know it, too. This is where Rita was murdered. Rita, who could have done this to you? They're empty. They must have emptied the trash earlier. 
Vida and I used to have picnics here when we were in high school. Who's there? Why are you wearing that getup? I'll have you know that I'm wearing the uniform of protection. Uniform of protection? What's that? It designates me as the protector of this town and endows me with special powers. Where do you protect the town from? There are dark forces at work. An evil power is lurking in the shadows, waiting for the opportunity to hatch its latest plot. I know exactly what you mean. I felt the same way for over a year. Feeling isn't enough, Mr. Dawson. You've got to act. It's my duty to put a stop to their plans. Stop them before they take over the entire world. What sort of powers does your uniform give you? This uniform renders me invulnerable. When I wear it, nothing can harm me. Well, nothing except for a little poison ivy every now and then. <laughs> Where did you get this uniform of protection? A woman delivered it to me. A very wise and noble woman. You're referring to the Keeper of the Scrolls, aren't you? No, no, no. Eleanor, my mail carrier delivered it to me. She's some cutie, let me tell you. <laughs> the uniform came out of a catalog. Who are you? My name's Slim. You're Mr. Dawson, aren't you? The one they think murdered Rita Scanlon? My name is Mike Dawson, but I didn't murder Rita. I know. A voice told me that you were innocent. You don't think that's strange, do you? Hearing voices in your head? No, I don't think that's strange at all. I've been hearing voices myself. I knew that people had you all wrong, Mr. Dawson. You and me, we belong to a much larger world. One that most people couldn't begin to fathom. You're right. No one believes some of the things I've seen and heard. Why are you hiding in the bushes? I'm checking out the murder site. The criminal always leaves a clue at the scene of the crime. I don't know what you hope to find here. The sheriff must have gone over this place with a fine-tooth comb. The sheriff? <laughs> don't make me laugh. <laughs> that buffoon couldn't solve a jigsaw puzzle. He has no conception of the significance of this crime. Did you know Rita? I knew Miss Scanlon was the town librarian. At least that's what she claimed. But I have my suspicions about her. What was suspicious about Rita? She was involved with something. Something unclean. I haven't figured out what it is yet, but when I do, it will expose the evil lurking under this town. You seem to be the only one who really understands what is going on. Who do you think killed Rita? I think she was murdered by aliens from another dimension. You know about the ancients. So the Keeper of the Scrolls was right. They were involved with Rita's death. Of course it was the ancients. Who else could have committed such a horrible crime? It had to be the ancients. Finally, someone else who knows about the dark world. I can't even confide in my mother or my best friend about this. I'm so glad I met you, Slim. Or it might have been O.J. working in cahoots with the Trilateral Commission, I'll betcha. Then again, it could have been the International Communist Conspiracy. This looks like their handiwork. Uh, I've got to go now. Wait! Before you leave, I did find something the sheriff overlooked. It's a ticket stub to last week's high school reunion. Do you mind if I have the ticket, Slim? I don't have many mementos of Rita. Take it, Mr. Dawson. It's not much of a clue, and besides, I've got theories about a hired hitman and a satanic cult to follow up on. Don't worry, I'll find Rita's murderer and prove your innocence. Gee, thanks, Slim. That makes me feel a lot better. Glad to have your vote of confidence, Mr. Dawson. Well, I've got some investigating to do. Oh, by the way, I live out behind the pool hall if you need to get in touch with me. I 
aching headache. I better go see Dr. Sims. Make yourself comfortable, Mike. I've been expecting you. I have an awful headache, Doctor. Have you been taking your medicine? The medicine doesn't work. Can't we try something else? We could try hypnosis. It's proven effective with many of my patients. You may experience some unsettling dreams, but it might also help your memory. I'm still having trouble remembering things. This is to be expected. You're still recovering from a nervous breakdown. The murder last week has further exacerbated the problem. Why can't I remember what happened at the reunion? It's always a shock to learn a friend has been killed. And you were the last one to see Rita alive, right? The human mind tends to block out painful memories. Sheriff Butler suspects me of Rita's murder. Yes, the sheriff was in here asking about you. I told him I didn't think you were capable of such an act. I just wish I could remember more about what happened that night. Don't worry, Mike. The memories will come back in time. I'm feeling much better, Doctor. I don't think I need to see you anymore. I disagree, Mike. I know you're frustrated with the slow progress, but these things take time. But perhaps some hypnotherapy will speed up your recovery. All right. You've convinced me. Hypnotize me. You're feeling sleepy. You feel like you're drifting on a cloud, on a rubber raft at the swimming pool. All is calm. All is quiet. You are sleepy. Hmm. I feel so dizzy. This reunion banquet is giving me a headache. I need some fresh air. You always need fresh air, Mike. I swear, I don't know what's happened to you since you've moved away from here. And frankly, I don't like it. Come on, Rita. Give me a break. You know I've been... sick? Sick of people, you mean. You've become such a loner, Mike. You never want to go anywhere where there's people. You don't even want to visit any of my friends. Not your reading group again. Always busy doing stuff for the library. You never have any time to spend alone with me anymore. Why can't it be like it was when we were in high school? People change, Mike, but I don't care for the change that's come over you. You're drunk. I'll see you later. I have a friend to see. Fine. Just walk away. I hope the boogeyman gets you. Whew. Why am I so dizzy? I bet the punch is spiked. Is someone there? Don't play games! Mike? Is that you? Ah! Mike? Are you awake? How's your headache now? I feel better. My headache's gone. Good. Perhaps hypnosis is the answer to your problems. I was back in the dark world. It was so strange. The dark world again, huh? Hmm. It probably represents what you consider evil. An internal conflict, perhaps. I was wrong about this hypnosis stuff. I'd like to do it some more. I'm glad it's working for you, Mike. But it looks like our time is up. If the headache comes back, we'll try more hypnosis. Can't we talk some more? I think we're really on to something. I'm sorry, Mike, but I have another appointment coming up. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. It's about time the carnival opened. I'll bet they were just trying to build up the public's curiosity so they'll attract more customers. What's the most interesting things to see? Go to the sideshow behind the carousel to the left. 
We have a boring weightlifting act, some phony baloney fortune teller, and a pair of neurotic Siamese twins. I'm sure you'll have a blast. You don't have to be so rude, you know. Well, excuse me! Look, pal, I've been coughing up my lungs all day. So why don't you just cough up a ticket, and we can put it into this delightful conversation right now. What? Are you sick or something? Good guess, Einstein. You ought to think about going into medicine. Damn straight I'm sick! But I left my friggin' medicine inside the carnival, and I have to man this stupid ticket booth all day. Where is your medicine? Maybe I could get it for you. So, you're Albert Schweitzer, too. My medicine's in the cooler in the employee tent. You'll find it behind a carousel to the right. I'll get your medicine for you right now. Hey, no admittance without a ticket. I have an admission ticket. So, fork it over. Just because you're making some nice chit-chat, you think I'm going to let you into the carnival for free? What kind of fool do you think I look like? Here's your lousy ticket. Glad to see you finally figured out how the system works. You know, this is the strangest carnival I've ever seen. You're telling me I'm relying on a suspected murderer to get me some life-saving medicine. This carousel must mark the center of the carnival. There are walkways leading off in four directions. What a mess. I must have wandered into the backstage area of the carnival. This must be some kind of employee storage and break room. This anvil's too heavy. I can't lift it by myself. This must be the ice chest that contains the clown's medicine, but there's an anvil on top. freaks and distortions to last a lifetime. I've heard about Siamese twins before, but I've never actually seen a pair until now. Despite their affliction, these two women are quite lovely. Hello, ladies. Hello, sir. I hope that you are enjoying the carnival. Say, this guy looks delicious, doesn't he, Minnie? <laughs> Who are you? I'm Minnie. This is my sister, Daisy. We're Siamese twins. We're very, very close. I need to get the clown's medicine, but it's trapped under an anvil. Can you help? Oh, dear. You might try asking Gargan, the strong man next door. He can probably lift it for you. Why, that muscle-bound crybaby is probably too busy feeling sorry for himself. Don't even bother. What do you do at the carnival? We work in the sideshow. What's it look like? Duh. Please, Daisy, don't be rude. The gentleman may be interested to know that besides working at the sideshow, we also design the Hall of Mirrors. That's interesting. Sideshow performers designing one of the attractions. It was appropriate for us, what with us being mirror images of each other. Have you seen it yet? You should go. <laughs> it's fiendishly clever. You may never return. Did you design anything else at the carnival? I wanted to put in the peep show, but Miss Purest Snow here won't allow it. Oh, Daisy, all you think about is sex, sex, sex. 
If I let you have your way, you'd open up a bordello. What are you writing? I'm addressing these postcards. We're sending them to famous people from all over the world. I'm writing the text of the postcards. We write to everyone. Jack the Ripper, Lizzie Borden, Genghis Khan. And I'm addressing this one to Charles Dickens. What's your name? Maybe we can send one to you. Everyone you're writing to is dead. Do they ever uh, write back? Yes, voices come into our heads. I always hear from women. And I always hear from men. Too bad none of them sound as young and virile as you, sweet bodies. Where do you send these postcards? To the dead letter office? Oh, that's very funny, sir. No, we send them to the local morgue. I'm sure they know where to forward them. So come on, hon. What's your name? Mm, my name is Philip Marlowe. Philip? You don't look like a Philip. Come off it, pal. What do you take us for, a couple of bimbos? My name's Mike Dawson. Mike Dawson? Oh, no! That was the name I was supposed to mail the key to. I think I made a big mistake. Watch your mouth, sis. The voices won't like it. No. I'm sick of you and your twisted ways, Daisy. You built the Hall of Mirrors as a favor for those voices you heard. Now I'm doing a favor for the voice I heard. Look, pretty boy, I'm not letting my sister say anything more. Go on, get out of here before we all get in big trouble. Minnie, are you all right? Haven't you caused enough trouble already? We've got nothing more to say to you. Get out! What a magnificent stage! This act must be something really special. Look at the muscles on that guy. I didn't know anyone did strongman acts anymore. Excuse me, Gargon. I'm in the middle of my act. What do you want? What kind of act do you do? I lift and juggle barbells and perform other amazing feats of strength. Enjoy my act while you can. I'll probably lose my job soon. I need some help. Could you lift an anvil off an ice chest for me? Sorry, but I'm not in the mood to help anyone. I'd take some lousy pills my doctor gave me, but they don't do much good. I'm washed up, and I know it. Why would you lose your job? I can't draw a crowd. They all go to see the Siamese twins or the fortune teller. There's just no interest in my talents. Not when you can rent Arnold or Sly at the video store for a buck. Come on, Mr. Gargon. There's no reason to be so depressed. Life's not so bad. Oh, yeah? Obviously, you didn't hear about the missing box office money. People are just plain no good. Now stop interrupting me! A fortune teller. These people are nothing but rip-off artists. It's probably how this carnival makes most of its profits. Are you a fortune teller? Indeed I am. Pandora, the all-seeing and all-knowing. Allow me to introduce you to my friend, Lucifer. What's my fortune? I get my strongest readings from personal items. Uh, perhaps you have something in your possession I may examine. That sure is a big snake. Is he friendly? Lucifer is very friendly to me. She is my familiar. She gives me my powers. Isn't that right, Lucy Goosey? What does your snake eat? Whatever she can fit into her mouth. By the way, I wouldn't stand too close. What powers does your snake give you? Powers that allow me to see into the distant past and the far future. Powers that let me help people guide their destinies. In layman's terms, I tell fortunes. What's my fortune? 
I get my strongest reading. What role does this play in my future, Pandora? I see a hat rack with one of its four pegs occupied. What can you tell me about this? I see a church floating over a pool of blood. Do you get any readings off of this? I see a vault being tried before a judge. What about this, Pandora? I am sorry, young man. My powers are exhausted. Please come back later. Rita's ticket stub to the high school reunion is the only memento I have of her. Hi, Slim. Do you have any more theories about who murdered Rita? I was just down at the farm behind Mayor Fleming's house. There are some strange rings burnt into the cornfield like a flying saucer landed there. I'm thinking that it was spacemen who wanted Rita dead. Oh, that's a very interesting theory, Slim. You do that, Mr. Dawson, and I'll let you know if I turn up anything. I hate to admit it, Slim, but I need some leads in the Rita Scanlon murder. I've been looking into a political connection, so I went over to the library where Rita worked, and sure enough, there are pictures of JFK all over the place. I'm wondering if Rita knew something about the assassination and somebody wanted to shut her up for good. Tell you what, Slim. Why don't you follow up on your theories, and I'll pursue my own. Good idea, Mr. Dawson. We'll compare notes later. See you in the funny papers. <laughs> Hi, Slim. I've been checking out that carnival in the park near where Rita was killed. Seems that a lot of children go in but never come out. There's got to be a connection with Rita. I mean, she was a child once, wasn't she? Oh, that's a very interesting... You... I hate to admit it, Slim, but... I've been reading about what cigarettes do to you, and you know how Melissa smokes like a chimney. I figure that she went into a nicotine craze and had Rita killed. Tell you what, Slim. Good. I Hi, Slim. I'm still trying to follow up on that Melissa lead, Mr. Dawson. She has her nicotine-stained fingers all over this crime. After all, where there's smoke, there's fire. Oh, that's a very interesting... You Jack. Thanks for meeting me, Jack. So what's your plan? We gotta deflect Sheriff Butler's suspicions. You're innocent, right? We've gotta prove it. Okay, Jack. How can I get myself out of this mess? I think you can prove your innocence. 
If you can't remember what happened that night, we just gotta prove someone else did it. Rita did say that she was going to meet a friend after the reunion, but who? Well, it so happened that when I overheard the deputy, he did mention some other possible suspects. I, for one, agree with him on the selection. Who are the other suspects? At first, I didn't believe it. Then I thought about it, and it makes sense, I'm telling you. Two folks who ain't what they seem. How about Mayor Fleming and Doc Larson? Mayor Fleming? That's right. Mayor Irving Fleming. I once saw Rita sitting in his car in front of the courthouse, and they were looking pretty cozy. The election's coming up, and I'm sure he's busy sweeping all the skeletons out of his closet. Doc Larson? The medical examiner? Have you ever noticed how many female visitors they have at the morgue? Rumor has it that he has his fingers where they shouldn't be. He used to have Rita personally deliver medical textbooks from the library, you know. You're forgetting something, Jack. I'm not a detective. So? Neither is Sheriff Butler. Listen, you need to collect some new evidence. I can't do it because, hey, look at me, I stick out like a sore thumb. But you do blend in and can probably do some digging. Do you know if Rita dated anyone else? Besides you? Well, she did used to see Sheriff Butler, but that ended a long time ago. Anyway, you have two good leads to get you started. As for me, I'm out of here. The Sheriff used to date Rita? I didn't know that. Now I really don't trust him. I think you're barking up the wrong tree with that one, but what the hell? Maybe it'll take some of the heat off you if you harass the Sheriff. Anyway, I gotta go. Wait, Jack. I can't do this by myself. You're capable of more things than you think, Mike boy. And I'm not abandoning you. I'll be cruising the neighborhood. If you turn up anything, come back here and flag me down. Sheriff, I just came in to get out of the heat. Back again, Dawson? I hope that you're ready to confess. I heard that you were upset about Rita's body being moved from the crime scene so quickly. Yeah? Well, you heard right. Why was Doc Larson in such a hurry to remove the body? I don't know. Moving the body sure messed up the crime scene before we had a chance to look for physical evidence. Mighty unprofessional behavior, if you ask me. How well did you know Rita? Yeah, hardly at all. I don't patronize the library very much. I get my reading material down at the newsstand. Come on, Sheriff. I know all about you and Rita. Shut your mouth, Dawson. You're pissing me off. I heard you used to date Rita. Well, so what if I did? Rita was interested in lots of men. Jealous, Dawson? Is that what made you snap and kill her? Did Rita dump you because you couldn't satisfy her, Sheriff? Why, you little turd. I'll have you know that I was the one who dumped her. She was too bookish. Always running off to spend time with that reading group of hers. Just what was this reading group that Rita belonged to? I don't know. Some of Rita's friends, people from the library, I guess. She was always trying to get me to go with her, but I couldn't see myself sitting around with a bunch of eggheads discussing poetry. That's why I dumped her. Do you still think I'm the one who killed Rita? I can't think of anyone else who makes a better suspect. I tell you, if I had one good, hard piece of evidence against you, I'd have you behind bars so fast your head would spin. Anybody could have murdered Rita, Sheriff. There were no signs of a struggle, so she must have known the killer. And you were the last person to see her alive. But even if she knew her killer, it could still be almost anybody in town. 
but it keeps adding up to you, boy. But don't you worry, we'll get you eventually. Well, I think I'll be going now. You know, Dawson, sooner or later you're gonna make a mistake. And then I'm gonna lock you up for the rest of your natural life. would have a waiting room. One of those daytime talk shows must be on. Looks like the topic is serial killers. Who would sit in a morgue and read magazines? I think there's someone making out inside. And it looks like they play pretty rough. Excuse me, sir. I need to speak with you. Oh, what is it? I'm, I'm very busy with a patient. You're the coroner. Why would you be seeing patients? I have to keep a practice on the side. You don't think this town pays me a lot of money, do you? Well, if I could just get a break, I'd move out of this one-horse town. What kind of a break? Why, a real scientific breakthrough. I'm presenting a paper on the subject very soon. You don't think I take this medical examiner job seriously, do you? It's hardly a proper position for a man like me. What kind of scientific breakthrough? New methods of inserting DNA into the ovum, Dawson. It will open up all sorts of exciting possibilities in genetic research. It should also be my ticket out of this backwater town. I'm afraid science has never been one of my favorite subjects. That's typical of the Crowler, Texas mentality. The sooner I get out of this place, the better. You're not happy here? This town offers no challenges for a man of my capabilities. Uh, mark my words, you won't see me around here much longer. If all goes well, I'll have a position at a major university or research facility by next September. How well did you know Rita? Hardly at all. She worked at the library. That's all I know about her. I heard that you were seeing a lot of Rita shortly before her death. She was, um, aiding me with my DNA experiments, yes. She often brought me indispensable medical texts from the library. She was very good that way. Come on, Doc. Rita was a pretty girl. You're a charismatic guy. You two were having a fling, weren't you? That does it, Dawson! Get the hell out of my office! Excuse me, sir. I need to speak- Why are you bo- What can you tell me about Rita's death? I'm sorry. I can't discuss the case with anyone while it's under investigation. Why did you move Rita's body so quickly from the crime scene? Because I didn't want anyone to see the body in broad daylight. That's how we catch criminals, you know, by hiding important facts of the case. And that's why I can't disclose those facts to you of all people, Dawson. I heard that Rita's murder was particularly gruesome. Why, yes. It was fascinating the way the killer... D Damn it, Dawson! I told you that I can't reveal any facts about the case! How well did you know Rita? Hardly at all. She was... Do you have any idea who killed her? Well, from what I understand, you're the main suspect, Dawson. And if it's true that you killed Rita, I hope that they fry your ass. Speaking of public institutions, I heard that you used to work for a hospital. Until you got fired, that is. What? Who told you this? Something having to do with seducing a patient, I believe. 
Boy, it would be a shame if that piece of news got around town. Why, you'd be finished around here, I imagine. Don't threaten me, you little snot. Why, for two cents, I'd wring your neck. Get the hell out of my office and never come back. <laughs> Doc Larson must have accidentally hit the admittance button when he slammed his fist on the counter. Oh my god, I'm gonna throw up! The toe tag says this guy's name was Mark Danson. He's wearing some kind of charm around his neck. It looks like a key made of glass. I can't take this guy's necklace charm. He obviously wanted to be buried with it. Oh my god! That's Rita! Her head's been cut off! Poor Rita. What monster could have done such a horrible thing? Here's Rita's autopsy report. Rita's head was forcibly removed by a sharp instrument with a serrated edge and, oh God, her tongue and eyes were cut out and left at the murder site. Here's Mark Danson's autopsy report. This says that Danson died of natural causes, old age apparently. Hmm, he was a lighthouse keeper. I didn't know anybody still did that. And he walked with a cane. That's funny. Here's an envelope addressed to Mark Danson in care of the city morgue. It was sent by Minnie in care of the carnival. But there's nothing inside the envelope. Here's Mark Danson's envelope. This says that that's funny. I can't take this guy's necklace charm. Pandora, I need your talents again. <laughs> Lucifer and I have been expecting you. What can you tell me about Minnie and Daisy? I see a glassy envelope sent to Vaughn, who in the morning walks on four feet, at midday two, and in the evening three. But now he sleeps. What can you tell me about Gargon? I see a lightning bolt striking his head and a great weight lifting from his heart. What can you tell me about the clown? I hear a distant thunderclap provoking laughter close to home. Thank you. That was very insightful. It was our pleasure. Good fortune to you. His goodbye, Lucy dear. Minnie, are you all right? Haven't you caused it?
Here's Mark Danson's. This says that Danson died of natural causes. Hey, that's the answer to Pandora's riddle. I walk on four legs in the morning, two legs during the day, and three legs at night. A man walks on four legs as a baby, and three legs when he needs a cane. Minnie meant to send this glass key to me. I don't think Mark Danson will mind if I take it. Here's an address book. Why would someone keep an address book locked up in a file cabinet? Let's take a peek inside. This is full of women's names and telephone numbers. Oh my God! He gave Rita a four-star rating. Why that dirty old man? Hey, that's odd. Jimmy Gardner's phone number is listed too. This glass key looks like something out of a fairy tale. Too bad real life doesn't always have a happy ending. It kills me that Doc Larson put Rita's name in his little black book. I can't stand the thought of that dirty old man being interested in her. figure out which side of each room is a mirror and which is a passage. I hate these things. This room is more ornate than the others. I need to find a path leading to this room. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path leading to... There's a mirror between me and this room. leading to this room. leading to this There's a mirror between me and the between me and this room. There's a mirror 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 between me and this room. There's 
there's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path leading to this. There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path leading to this room. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path leading to this. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path leading to this room. I need to find a path leading to. I need to find a path. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me and the I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a path here. There's a mirror between me and the I need to find a path lead. 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 There's a mirror between me and this room. This glass key looks like something out of a fairy tale. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path. I need to find a path. There's a mirror between me and the I need to find a path leading to this room. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path leading to there's a mirror between me. There's a path here. There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path leading to. This mirror has a keyhole.
she opened the mirror. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path. There's a mirror between me and the I need to find a path. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me and the This room is more ornate than the others. There's a mirror between me and the I need to find a path. I need to find a path lead. similar to this a year ago. Michael, at last you have come to save us. To you. The Dreketh guard disemboweled me, then threw me into the maze to die. You must hurry, or billions will die on both sides of the portal. Is there anything I can do for you? No. I am dying. Now quickly, you must rescue the light and gather the points. Destroy the generator. You are our only hope! <sighs> How horrible! This must be what happens to Dark Worlders when they die. Another maze! If I really am in the Dark World, then this should be nearly identical to the Hall of Mirrors. I need to find a path leading to this. There's a mirror between me and the there's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path. There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a mirror between me and the There's a mirror between me and the there's a mirror between me and the I need to find a path lead It's true I have returned to the dark world The sun never shines here I can't tell if it is day or night I don't like the look of those two guards. This must be some kind of prison. I thought the Siamese twins were an odd pair, but these two are downright bizarre. Who are you? We will not tell you which of us is Ick and which is Uck. Because one of us... What is through that passageway? It could be the prison compound. And then again, it could not. Who is being held prisoner? It could be the keeper of the scrolls. Mm, then again, the prison could be empty. Let me inside the prison. Only authorized Dark World personnel are allowed to enter. 
Leave the premises immediately! I am a Dark World prison official. Let me in. Oh, a Dark Worlder, are you? I bet you don't even know if it's day or night. It's always dark here. But we have day and night just like anywhere else. Any Dark Worlder can tell the difference. I am a Dark Worlder. Give me a chance to prove it. We will let you pass if you prove to us that you are really a Dark Worlder. Tell us which of us is Ick and which is Uck. And tell us whether it's day or night. You can ask questions if you like. We like to be fair. Is it daytime? Of course it's daytime. No, it is most definitely night. Which one of you is Ick? During the night, I claim to be Ick. I am really Uck. He's lying. I am Uck. I am Uck, and it is night. Which one of you is telling the truth? I am. I am Uck, and it is night. He is not. It is not. I am Uck, and it's daytime, and it's final. about this some more. Then leave. Don't come back until you can prove you're a dark worlder. Mm, ugly organic. Rita's head. It's happening all over again. The ancients have returned. That's the ancient spaceship. It's drawing its psychic energy from this power generator. Thin. I can't tell if it's designed for inserting or dispensing something. The cable runs from the power generator to the inside of that structure. from my first visit to the Dark World. Only this incubator is much bigger. What a monstrous fetus! And it's looking right at me. I can't open it. It's hermetically sealed. thing. I can't tell if it is an electric motor or a shooting gallery. There's an empty socket here. It looks like a jack for some vital component. There's an empty socket here. looks like a power grid map. It kind of resembles the business district in my hometown. This device is definitely biomechanical. Part living organism and part machine. This machine has an empty socket like the other one. Speak? To be 
sorry, to be producing power infected with random magnetic fluxes, to be not able to stabilize magnetic emanations from power disks. To be announcing, to be producing stable power transmissions with secondary effect of unusually strong magnetic emissions, to be analyzing tertiary effect. Speak to me. To be announcing, to be emanating level 6 magnetic waves from power disk, to be permeating dimensional boundaries. Speak to me. To be announcing. This power grid seems to correspond to the seedier sections of my own hometown. What a hideous mechanism. This perverted joining of man and machine has got to be stopped. Here's another empty slot. This lit section resembles our civic center. Now there's nothing here that looks like a control mechanism. This must be the gate to the power center. These must be the controls for the gate. Data card not presented. Access denied. This hell hole looks like a twisted perversion of my hometown. There's something oppressive and frightening about this building, but the architecture is spectacular. It must be a governmental center. Minen have been charged with conspiring in a rebellion against the ancients. How do you plead? I am innocent, dispassionate one. In the interest of expediting matters, we shall enter a plea of guilty and issue a summary judgment. Because of your years of faithful service as a privileged worker, I shall be merciful. Instead of suffering public humiliation like the leader of your rebellion, you are hereby sentenced to death. Oh, thank you, dispassionate one. You are kind and just. This justice looks like a clown to me. I'll bet this cabinet is used to contain evidence. Not that the truth matters here much more than it does in the normal world. It won't open. There's some kind of power lock on it. How could you execute that poor creature just now? What kind of justice is that? I can't believe my ears, questioning a justice's decision. That is tantamount to questioning the ancients themselves. You are a loyal minion of the ancients, aren't you? I 
hate the ancients and will do everything in my power to destroy them. Well, why didn't you say so? There are many here in the Dark World who feel the same as you, and all of them are sentenced to death. Oh my god, the stench in this room is horrible, like a mountain of rotting meat. This must be the body of the privileged worker that I saw sentenced to death. I got the data card back. Damn, I've got to get out of here. What happened? Where am I? A woman. She'd be beautiful if her flesh wasn't decayed. Who are you? I am called the Keeper of the Souls. Where am I? You are in the Underworld, Michael. The River of the Dead. You know my name? Yes, Michael. I've been expecting you. Keeper of the Souls? What does that mean? I am the Guardian of the Underworld, and the Keeper of the Dead. All those who die in the Dark World fall under my care. What happened to me? You met with an unfortunate accident, Michael. You were killed. Are you saying that I'm dead? Not exactly. You are not of this world and hence not easily destroyed here. You will leave this place. It is your destiny. Does that mean I'm immortal? Hardly, Michael. You are still subject to the cold hand of death, but you are not easily killed. I foresee that you will again visit me in this place. One day you will stay permanently if you continue to be so careless. What is my destiny? You are destined to stand against the evil forces controlling the Dark World. You are charged with defeating the Ancients and saving your own world in the process. Some of the people of the Dark World will aid you. Who will aid me? You will meet them in the course of your journey. They will extend a hand of friendship to you. But they will pay with their lives, and their souls will be remanded to me. Attend! What in God's name was that? The life fluids of the Keeper of the Light now flow in the River of the Dead. Her biomatter expired not long after she met you in the portal. Jeez, this place gives me the creeps. You need not linger here, Michael. I have my work to attend to. And you have yours. How do I get out of this hellhole? Climb the staircase. It leads back to the Dark World, near to where the Ancients have erected their power generator. Go, and fulfill your destiny! as privileged worker. Access permitted.
This cul-de-sac ends at a cross. Why are there symbols of death all around this complex? This building reminds me of some project I messed up in shop class. There's some kind of electronic lock on this door. I can't open it. This is either a Dark World Armory, or I've wandered into a gun shop in Los Angeles. This Dark Worlder looks like some kind of craftsman. These look like weapons, but they're so bizarre that I'm not too sure. Some of them almost look alive. Who are you? I'm a simple craftsman, skilled in the arts of binding metal with flesh. I build biomechanical appendages. What are biomechanical appendages? Organic and mechanical weapons that connect with and into your body. They are controlled by your nervous system, just like a normal muscle. What is this place? A weaponry and supply shop. I create powerful weapons used by the lackeys that serve our masters. Who are your masters? The ancients. They force us to work for them or die, those monsters. But at least I am able to practice my craft. Are all the inhabitants of the Dark World enslaved? All of us still alive. Those few of us the ancients deemed valuable were spared and forced to work for them. Rather than kill us outright, they drain our life force slowly. Offerings, they call it. How can the ancients be defeated? I don't see how. There was one brave soul, Goth was his name, who tried to organize a rebellion, but the ancients ordered me to build a power lock to confine him behind the recreation center. Who are the lackeys? We all are. Craftsmen like me, the Dreketh Guard, the Justices, privileged workers. We are all under the ancients' rule. And we will remain so until we die. What are you working on now? I am building a grenade launching crossbow. A special order from the Dreketh Guard. Unfortunately, I don't have a trigger mechanism for it. Weapons are in such high demand these days. Parts are hard to come by. Why can't you just build a triggering device? Supplies of metal have been difficult to obtain since the ancients took over. Everything is being reserved for the power center. But if you can find me a metal triggering device, I'll build you a weapon. Hey, can I get one of these biomechanical appendages from you? For a price. I trade and sell my work. Right now I could use a triggering device. Well, this is all very interesting, but I must be leaving. I'm sure I'll be back. Do you think you have a choice?
what a magnificent structure. It looks like a temple, but I can't imagine that Dark Worlders would find anything worthy of worship. This place gives me the creeps. Even in the normal world, I feel uneasy about attending church, especially since my father died. That's the Keeper of the Sword. I saw her in the Hall of Justice. That's the Keeper of the Light. I wish I had a chance to speak with her longer before she died. That's the Keeper of the Scrolls. She is such a beautiful creature. This Dark Worlder has a regal air about her despite being held captive in a power beam. Hello, I'm Mike Dawson. What is your name? I am the High Priestess of the Temple of the Triangle. Welcome, and learn what I have to teach. What is this place? This temple was constructed eons ago as a place of worship for Dark World beings. Originally, it was set up to honor the points of the Triangle, but of course all that is now gone. Why do you say that everything is now gone? The Ancients have taken over our world. They have outlawed our religion and imprisoned spiritual leaders such as me. You're a spiritual leader? I was the High Priestess. I conveyed the wisdom of the Keepers to all Dark Worlders who worship the Triangle. But now I am forbidden by the Ancients to instruct our people. Why are you helping me if you are forbidden to do so? Just because something is forbidden does not mean it no longer occurs. It is my destiny to teach. It is your destiny to learn and act upon that knowledge. Restrictions only enhance the desire to fulfill that destiny. You don't look like you're imprisoned. I am imprisoned here in a confinement beam. The ancients thought it too dangerous to keep all the religious leaders imprisoned in the same area. Some are held in the prison, some under house arrest. Tell me about the points of the triangle. The points of the triangle were the basis of our religion. The three points are truth, represented by the light, knowledge, represented by the scrolls, and justice, represented by the sword. Tell me about the sword. The sword is a powerful weapon against injustice and fear. It is useless against the mundane, but against evil, it is invincible. Some of you are held in a house of rest? I expected worse from the ancients. It is more insidious than it sounds. The ancients had their minions install power locks all over the area. The machines in the power center direct energy to various sections of the city to split us up and discourage rebellion. This is all making my head swim. I need some fresh air. It is much to absorb in a single session. Return when you are ready to learn more. As you can see, I have nowhere else to go. Why, there's a picture of my old house in Woodland Hills. And here's a picture of me. This chapter is about how I stopped the Ancients' first plan to conquer the normal world. There's a guard in front of that building. This looks like some kind of crime scene. This biomechanoid looks like Ick and Uck's long lost brother. I have important news to give to the ancients from Ick and Uck, but I can't tell if they are truthful. Ick always tells the truth during the day, but lies at night. Book lies during the day, but tells the truth at night. Now go away. Are you one of the Dreketh Guard? Hardly. I'm simply a biomechanoid, pulled off the assembly line for sentry duty. Why are you guarding this building? It is the house of the High Priestess. It has been deemed off-limits to all personnel. Can you help me? I think I'm lost. Walk elsewhere, organic form. You do not belong here. Why is the House of the High Priestess off-limits? I presume that the ancients believe that it still contains secrets hidden away. Secrets that might undermine their authority. Look, I have a privileged worker card. No one may enter the House of the High Priestess, not even privileged workers. I'm sorry to have bothered you. I'll leave immediately.
building looks like some kind of processing plant. What's that rancid stench? It smells like rotten meat. This looks like a woman's head suspended from the ceiling. There's a button on the sign. To be sorry. To be not able to sing at this time. To be damaged by vermin. What is this place? Why, it's the food hall, of course. Everyone knows that. But we don't have much food now. The deliveries have stopped. What is there to eat around here? I still have some rations of liquefied entrails in my food dispensers. Very filling. What are these creatures I see peering out of the walls every now and then? Them? They're electro-vermin, chewing on the power cables, most likely. They're just about my only customers these days. Anything unusual going on around here lately? Unusual? Aside from being enslaved by a master race of alien beings? Not much. Is there anyone to lead a revolt? Everyone works for the Ancients now. I'm forced to turn over all my proceeds to them. We have to. We are killed if we don't. Of course, there was one old fool who tried to lead a revolt, but the Ancients locked him up next door. It sure is empty around here. The regulars don't come around much anymore. Things have changed since the takeover. I get a few of the privileged workers every What are privileged workers? You know, those who have chosen to work for the Ancients. They get special treatment. Did someone take over the Dark World? Yes, the invaders from space. Everyone calls them the Ancients. They've taken over our world. They run everything from their spaceship, but we never see them. They use their minions to maintain control. Who are the Ancients? Horrible beings with great mental powers. They've been systematically eliminating us. But I stopped living in fear a long time ago. I resigned myself to death. When did the Ancients first arrive? More than a year ago. The first few months were very bloody. Half of our population was wiped out and our government fell. The Ancients now control our judges and the Dreketh Guard. Do the Ancients have total control over the Dark World? Yes. Now we're a police state. And I'd steer clear of the Hall of Justice if I were you. The Dark Justices are not very friendly towards strangers. Especially those who are organic instead of biomechanical. Who are the Minions? The troopers who enforce the Ancients' decrees, and the Justices who administer them. We have no one to defend us any longer. The Keepers are all dead or imprisoned. <laughs> Don't tell me anymore. This is too much for me to take. I've heard that you organic beings were weak. We dark worlders have had to take this for more than a year. Well, no one is forcing you to share our misery. Not yet, anyway. Go on, get out of here. <laughs> Just looking at this maggoty carcass makes me sick. No wonder nobody's eating here. Do you mind if I take this uh, delicacy with me? Take it, human. No one else is left to eat it but the vermin. Matrix verified as privileged worker. Access permitted.
Okay, I know the answers to your riddle. Then tell us, which is which? And tell us if it's day or night. You, on the right. You are Ick, and it is night. I guess you are a Dark Worlder after all. Well, forgive us for doubting you, privileged one. You may pass. Phew! This place smells like dried puke. Stench must be coming from these baby stomachs. Those poor things must be half starved. What a horrendously ugly baby! And it smells even worse than the small ones. Can you speak? It must be too young to speak. I wonder if it's old enough to use those machine guns on its arms. What happened to me? Hey, I'm back in the underworld. What happened to me? Hello again, Michael. You have... Whose blood are you going to spill this? You have been too careless, Michael. There is no one else to sacrifice in your place. Perhaps we keepers were wrong to put our faith in. Take it, human. What is this place? Why, it's the food. What I sure did someone take the horror? Went more to the ancient. Yeah. Who are the men? The what decree? Oh, just like what are you? What are these? Anything on you? Is every Okay, I know the answer. And Phew! This place is... It's her, the Keeper of the Scrolls. I feel like I should bow, but I'm too embarrassed. For a dark world being, she is absolutely beautiful, stunning. Hello again, your, uh, your honor. Greetings, Michael. I am pleased to finally meet you in person. Please forgive me for allowing myself to fall into a state of captivity. Even we keepers have failings. What's going on? We are besieged by the ancients once again. 
They have conquered the dark world and enslaved its inhabitants. Soon the ancients will enter your world and do the same to your people. What is the ancients' plan this time? They are hatching a horrid creature called the Behemoth. It is now incubating behind their power generator. This creature will enter your world and drain all life from it. But I thought the ancients weren't capable of entering the normal world. This is true, but they have altered the genetics of a dark world creature to create what is called a shapeshifter. A shapeshifter... What does this shapeshifter look like? No one knows. The ancients have kept its identity a secret. The shapeshifter goes to your world and severs the heads of his victims. How can I identify this shapeshifter? Only by facing your destiny will you know that. You must do it, Michael. Go back to your own world and search. Look hard at everyone you know. Look into your memories. You will find the answer there. What must I do next? The shapeshifter is gathering heads for the ancient's power generator. The generator taps directly into the victim's brain cells. Once four human heads are implanted, the incubator will be fully powered and the behemoth will hatch. How do I destroy the power generator? Seek out Goth the Hermit. He lives beyond the recreation center. Goth served the Keeper of the Sword. He has studied the power generator and knows how to use the three points to destroy it. What are the points? The points of the triangle are the three icons that have kept the peace in the Dark World until the arrival of the Ancients. The Light, the Scrolls, and the Sword. I met the Keeper of the Light. She said the Light had been stolen. Yes, I know. She is dead. I felt her life force extinguish. But if the Drekith Guard have taken the Light, then it may still be in the Hall of Troopers. Do you still have the scrolls? No, Michael. When I learned that the Drekith Guard were coming to arrest me, I gave the scrolls to the Keeper of the Sword for safekeeping. Where do I find the Keeper of the Sword? The Keeper of the Sword was arrested not long after me. She is now under trial in the Hall of Justice. However, her life force is weakening. She may already be dead. What must I do next? Do not neglect the fact that you are under suspicion in your own world. Seek out your government leader. He will point you towards the truth, although he is unaware of the role he plays. first visit to the dark world. I better watch my step in here. I still have the scars from my first encounter with the troopers of the Drekith Guard. They're cold as steel and cruelly logical. Excuse me, sir. Do you know what we did to the last organic who asked to be excused? We gutted him and threw him into the maze. Just like we did to that keeper worm. Now go! Hey, I need some questions answered. 
By order of the ancients, there can be no questions answered without proper data card identification. Here's my data card, you tin-plated sadist. Now show some respect. A thousand apologies, organic one. I had no idea that you were a privileged worker. Where are you assigned? I don't see how that is any of the Dreketh Guard's business. You're right, of course. I didn't mean to offend your organic sensibilities. Tell me, have you already made your offering today? Or do you prefer to do it at night? Yes, of course I already paid my offering. I prefer to make my offerings of blood to the ancients in the morning, too. It gets the day off to a good start, wouldn't you agree? Well, you're obviously a loyal minion of the ancients. Please, do me the honor of watching over the Hall of Troopers for a while. I have a new batch of prisoners to torture. a warm glow spreading through my body. For the first time, I really believe I can put a stop to the evil that's happening here. There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path leading to. This portal leads back to the Hall of Mirrors attraction. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path leap. I need to find a path leap. A wheel of fortune game. You guess a number, 
and if it turns up on the wheel, you win a prize. How much does it cost to play this game? Keep your quarter. Everyone with an admission ticket gets a spin at the wheel. How does this game work? All you have to do is call out a number between zero and nine, then give the wheel a spin. If your number comes up, you win a prize. What could be simpler? Excuse me, sir. Why, it's the gentleman. I heard that some of the carnival was... Listen, mister. The only financial harm that's come to this carnival is from the guy who's been spreading these rumors and driving customers away. How does this game work? All you have to do is... This ticket stub to the high school reunion is the only memento I have of her. I want to play spin the wheel. Pick a number between zero and nine. I'd like the number six. Okay, give the wheel a spin. Number six, a winner! Rita would have liked this stuffed animal I wanted to spin the wheel booth. Finding my way through the Hall of Mirrors and returning to the center of the Dark World wasn't nearly as difficult as I thought it would be. This creature looks like the stuffed animal I just won. While it's not exactly cute, it seems friendly enough. There's nothing here that looks like a control mechanism. The machine stopped working. My nose is burning from ozone and other assorted fumes. It's making me feel lightheaded. This sick creature has intravenous bottles plugged directly into his body. Wow. 
Jeez, and I thought Melissa was a chain smoker. Some kind of contraption made out of hypodermic needles. I'm afraid of needles. This ego massager sure is heavy, but I think I'll be able to lug it around with me. Don't bother me, human. Can't you see I'm floating? According to what the Keeper of the Scrolls told me, this is where Goth lives. This is the Keeper's best spy? No wonder they lost to the Ancients. I don't know anything about Dark World biology, but this creature looks deathly ill. Are you Goth? I need to talk to you. Go away! Let me die in peace! No, I need to talk to you. Wait, you're a human, aren't you? From the other side? Yes, the Keeper of the Scrolls sent me. I thought so. The Ancients haven't seized control of your side yet. Can you do something for me? I am dying. What happened to you? I was trampled during a skirmish with the troopers at Tau Square. My exoskeleton is broken. There is no one I can go to. The healers are all dead. Killed by the Ancients. What can I do for you? I am in great... I saw people using drugs in the building outside. No! Those drugs are used by the Ancients to enslave the masses. I need medicine. Talk to you first. No, the pain is too great. I am having difficulty maintaining my mental construct. I need medicine. I don't know where to find the medicine you need. You have drugs in the normal world, don't you? Painkillers? That is the only thing that can help me now. I can bring you some drugs from the normal world. Please hurry. I do not know how much longer I can cling to consciousness. It didn't take me too long to find my way from the dark world back to the center of town. I feel in better spirits when I hold this device. Too bad it's so heavy. Excuse me, Gargon. I'm in the middle of my act. What do you want? Is there anything I can do for you, Mr. Gargon? You can stop pretending to feel sorry for me. 
I know that no one really gives a damn. Now, let me get on with my act while I still have a job. Hey, Gargon, I bet you can't lift this. Oh, yeah? I can lift anything. I'm sure that snapped you out of your depression, Gargon. How do you feel? Why, I feel great! I don't know what you did, kid, but it sure beats those pills I've been taking. <laughs> I'm turning over a new leaf. No more feeling sorry for myself. No more rumors! Now will you lift the ice chest for me? I have to get something for the clown. I'm afraid I have some bad news about the clown. He died earlier today. Something about not getting his medicine in time. You've been taking pills? Yeah. Antidepressants. Painkillers. But heck, I don't need them anymore. Why don't you take them? Give them to someone who's really in pain. Agony is beginning to subside. How do you feel? I feel the pain no longer. But that does not change the fact that I will die soon. At least I will be able to enjoy the experience. Now it's your turn to help me. I'm told you know all about the ancients. No one knows all there is to know about the Ancients, except the Ancients. But I do know about their current plans. Tell me about you and your undercover work for the Keepers. I have been part of the underground movement against the Ancients for a long time. A very long time. But it appears that my labors are near an end. Tell me more about the underground movement. The Keepers organized us to revolt against the Ancients. But we underestimated the Ancients' power. We're all but completely slaughtered. If you couldn't stop the Ancients, then how can I? The points of the triangle are the only way. Gather the three points. The light, the scrolls, and the sword. The troopers seize the light. The scrolls are locked up in the Hall of Justice. Where is the Sword of Justice? The shapeshifter has it. After the Keeper of the Sword was crucified, the ancients gave it to the shapeshifter as a reward for his services in the normal world. Where can I find the shapeshifter? No one knows where he lives. I'm sure he is well protected by the Ancients. He is their most trusted agent, after all. 
What do I do with the points? The Ancient's Power Generator. I've had a good look at it. You can overload it with the point's energy. Send their spaceship a power surge that not even the Ancients can withstand. How do I use the points on the generator? With the light, illuminate that which is dark. With the scrolls, feed the truth into that which is false. And with the sword, sever that which should never have been joined. Just what are the Ancients' current plans? They've created a creature called the Behemoth that is able to live on your side. You realize that we Dark World inhabitants are not capable of crossing the barrier. There is one Dark Worlder who can exist in the normal world. You speak of the Shapeshifter. Yes but he can exist on your side only for short periods of time, long enough to bring back a human head for the Ancients' power generator. Why did the Ancients create this behemoth? This creature was designed to collect the life force of the human race and deliver it to the Ancients. Once the behemoth passes through the barrier into your world, it will become invincible. Why did the Ancients conquer your world? They are life force scavengers. They travel from planet to planet, feeding off the life force from each world they visit. It sustains them while they sleep in their spaceship and ponder the universe. Why would the Ancients be interested in my world? They have nearly siphoned off the life force from this world, as well as most of the other planets in my universe. They need new regions to harvest. Your world, for example. You've been very helpful. I'll let you rest now. Before you leave. Can this crossbow be used to magnetize metal? I suppose so. We used it to disrupt communications. There is very little metal in the dark world. Why do you ask? I need to win a game in my world. This crossbow might help. Games, he says. Were the keepers wrong about this one? Oh, let me rest, human. You are not worth my remaining energy. Use it wisely, human. The power is low, and I don't know how many shots are left. There's Mayor Fleming. I've known him ever since I was a kid. He and my father were in the insurance business together. Hi, Mayor Fleming. I'm Mike Dawson. Remember me? Why, of course, Michael. It's good to see you again. How have you been, Mr. Mayor? Just fine, Michael. And how are you feeling? I was told you were home recuperating from some illness. A psychological ailment, I understand? I've been home about a year on disability, but I'm feeling better now. That's good to hear. The missus and I have been meaning to ask you and your mother over for dinner. But, well, we've been having some problems lately. <laughs> you know how it is. I heard that you married Melissa Talbot. 
sort of a May-September romance. Well, Michael, you're only as young as you feel, and I prefer to feel young. <laughs> Who can blame a man for wanting to spice up his life with a little youth, huh? So tell me, how do you like being mayor? Well, it's certainly different from being in the insurance business. There's not much glamour in that line of work. Which is not to say anything against your father. He was a good partner. I've been thinking of my father a lot these days. I miss him. Yes, it was quite a tragedy. I remember finding him slumped over his desk in the office. Well, that was years ago. How is being mayor different? Being a salesman was nothing but lies and manipulation. As mayor, I'm still a salesman, but I'm selling something different. My ideals, my principles, my integrity. I'd like to talk to you about the recent murder, Mayor Fleming. You mean Ms. Scanlon? What do you want to know about it? It was a terrible thing. Rita was a friend of mine. Did you know her at all? Yes, but only slightly. Miss Scanlon did some research for my re-election campaign. She seemed like a nice young woman. Are you all right, Mayor Fleming? You look a little pale. Uh, yes, yes, I, I'm, I'm fine. I, I just realized I'm, I'm due at a meeting in the courthouse, and damn, I, I left my briefcase in the car. Oh, well, I, I probably won't need it. So long, Michael. Stay out of trouble. There's nothing inside the mayor's briefcase but a quarter and... Why that dirty old man? He's got a collection of porno pictures. Oh my God! These are pictures of Rita! Why, you sanctimonious old bastard! No wonder you're so anxious to bring in outside help to solve the case. You don't want the locals to find out that you and Rita were having an affair! Wait till Jack sees this! Maybe I can get the sheriff out of his office. Sheriff's office. Butler here. I want to report a robbery in progress. Come quick! Who's being robbed? Some poor old lady over at the ATM. She got roughed up pretty bad. Thanks. I'll be there in a jiffy. Looks like the coast is clear. I can't believe that idiot fell for my trick. Here's a photo of Rita, and the glass is smashed like it was hit with a fist. And here's an old newspaper article. The headline reads, Butler charges dropped. I knew it. Sheriff Butler was kicked off the Dallas police force because he was accused of accepting bribes. He was never convicted because the key witness was killed in a car accident. Wait till Jack sees this! It's locked.
Here comes Jack. Thanks for meeting me, Jack. No problemo. What have you found out? I found a newspaper article accusing the sheriff of graft. Well, I'm not surprised. I never thought that fat slob was a champion of law and order he pretended to be. Unfortunately, that doesn't link him to Rita. I also found a photo of Rita in his desk. He smashed it with his fist. Really? I guess he still carries a torch for Rita after all. Good job, Detective Dawson. You were right to suspect him. What else did your snooping turn up? I found a bunch of nude pictures of Rita in the mayor's car. I told you he's not the grandfatherly old politician he'd like us voters to think he is. Man, I'll bet you wanted to kill the guy when you saw those photos. Find anything else? Doc Larson has a little black book hidden in his file cabinet. Rita's name was in it. Hey, I knew he thought he was some kind of Kessa Nova. Can you believe it? And the guy pokes around with dead bodies all day. Got any more dirt? Hey, what about Mrs. Ramirez? Her husband was seen with Rita just before he died. Ah, the jealous wife angle. Well, that fire did leave her a rich widow, but the sheriff never could prove her involvement. I don't think you're going to have better luck. Still, I'd like to follow up on it. It's your life, but if I were you, I'd keep close tabs on the mayor and Doc Larson. Well, I'm out of here. Let me know if you find anything. Excuse me, Mrs. Ramirez. May I talk to you? What is it this time, young man? I was wondering if you knew Rita Scanlon, the woman who was murdered nearby last week. Only too well, young man. She was the devil's tool, I tell you. Why do you say that she was the devil's tool? All of you young people are servants of Satan. It's all that heavy metal music and drugs and sex. Did you see or hear anything the night Rita Scanlon was murdered? Young man, I have already told the police everything I know, which is nothing. But if you ask me, she had what was coming to her. Just how well did you know Rita? Well enough to know she tried to seduce my late husband. She was a harlot. She deserved what happened to her. Why do you say she got what was coming to her? Rita Scanlon was the devil's disciple. The whore of Babylon come back to stalk the earth. Look, lady, Rita was my friend. I just want to find out who murdered her, that's all. Is that so? Well, I have nothing more to say to someone who consorted with the whore of Babylon. Good day. I'm sorry to bother you again, Mrs. Ramirez. Is that so? And... I couldn't help but notice all the religious icons you have. Yes, they ward off the evil that is running amok here in Crowley. This town used to be a God-fearing community, but now I don't dare to leave my house except to go to church. Why do you think the town is corrupted by evil? Why just stroll along the street? and you will find vice and decadence behind every door. The church is our only hope for salvation. You do attend church, don't you? I go to church whenever I get the chance, I guess. You should go to church every Sunday, at least, and more often than that when possible. There are dark forces at work here, and your soul must be fortified to resist temptation. I was just admiring your house. It is lovely, isn't it? It's over a century old. At one time, it was the only building around here for miles. It must cost a lot to insure a place like this. My dad used to be in the insurance business. I'm sorry to hear that. Those insurance people are godless swine, worshipping nothing but the almighty dollar. Why, they even tried to cheat me out of my husband's life insurance. 
I finally had to take them to court. But I won. So your family's been here a long time? My late husband's family, actually. But they're all dead and gone. It's just me now. You must get lonely sometimes. Nonsense. I have my church, my books, and I have my money. Thank you, Mrs. Ramirez. I appreciate your time. God be with you, young man. Excuse me, Mrs. Ramirez. What is it? I couldn't help but notice... I do... I'm sorry to bother you again. Is that so? I was just admiring your... Young man. I'm sorry to bother you. Is... So your family... Young... Looks like the power to the entire block has been shut off. Listen up, Gardner. I've got some questions to ask you. Look, will you get off my back, Dawson? I've been looking into Rita's murder. Oh yeah? I'll bet the whole city council is breathing a sigh of relief knowing that you're on the case. How close were you to Rita before she was murdered? What business is it of yours? I thought that since you're still friends with Melissa, maybe you kept in touch with Rita. You leave Melissa out of this, you hear? And as for Rita, she wasn't the innocent librarian you and a lot of others thought she was. She got around. What do you mean Rita got around? Look, Dawson, stop asking questions before you get hurt. Rita was damaged goods. Only you were too stupid to notice. I paid a visit to Doc Larson's office. So what's that got to do with me? I found a little black book listing you, Rita, and several other women. I used to round up dates for Larson now and then. And your librarian friend needed some cash. I guess our public institutions don't pay their workers enough money. What are you saying? Rita wasn't like that. Then don't believe me. But it was Rita who came on to the dock, not the other way around. That girl was a real pro. Maybe I should go. Yeah, get out before I throw you out. Melissa. I've got to talk to you. Get lost, Dawson. Hey, why the cold shoulder? What makes you think you're worth giving the cold shoulder to? Just how well did you know, Rita? Not as well as some other people. Now stop bothering me! Hi, Melissa. Well... I heard that Rita was seen in your husband's car shortly before her death. Why, how dare you? Get the hell out of here! I'm here to collect my final payment. Quick, get in before someone sees you. Why, that was Jimmy Gardner. What's that thug doing here? Come on, lady. You still owe me one last payment for the torch job. Fork it over. You need to learn that patience is a virtue, young man. The money's been coming in slow from the insurance company, that's all. Here's the rest of what I owe you. Bless you for your help. Mrs. Ramirez is handing Jimmy a wad of bills. Jack didn't believe my suspicions about Jimmy. Wait till he gets a load of this.
see Dr. Sims. Why, hello, Mike. How are you feeling today? Not too bad, Dr. Sims. Are you sure? My head is splitting. Can you hypnotize me again? Of course, but let's talk first. What do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? I've learned something about Rita's murder. What have you learned? And how did you learn it? I think Rita's murderer is a shapeshifter from the Dark World. Do you have any proof of this? Uh, no. I'm working on it, though. I see. Tell me, Mike, what else has been troubling you lately? I've been having more dreams. More dreams about your dark world? I visited there again. The ancients are hatching a new plot against humanity. Is that so? Just what are they planning to do? They're trying to take over- Mike, I think this fantasy of yours is getting out of hand. Let's have no more talk about the so-called ancients for a while. These headaches are gonna kill me. When did this last one begin? A little while ago. I was out for a walk at the park. I stopped by the Ramirez mansion. And what did you see? Well, I'd rather not talk about it. Mike, you're not going to get better unless you completely confide in me. Let's just get on with the hypnosis, okay? All right. We'll hypnotize you now. Relax. Empty your mind and stare at the spot on the ceiling. You're feeling sleepy. You are calm. At peace. Here's part of it. I'll have the rest tomorrow night when I can get to the re-election fund. Make sure you do. This will be harder to get away with than torching that rich guy was. Boy, that Rita sure had a thing for other people's husbands. Look! Up there, it's Mike Dawson. He's been listening in on us. Dawson! Still sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. Just like your friend Rita. You want to end up dead like her and all her other friends? Anybody hungry? How about some filet of brain? The gray matter is particularly tasty today. Just what makes us Dark Worlders strong and healthy. Hey, Mike! Your shoes are bleeding! Oh, you're so gross, Mike. No wonder Rita would rather be with my husband than with you. Mike? Are you awake? How do you feel now? What a strange dream. I know. You talked all through it. What did I say? Quite a bit. You're angry with the mayor, aren't you? I'm angry at Jimmy. He killed Mr. Ramirez for having an affair with Rita. You're projecting, Mike. I think you're the one who was jealous of Rita. Rita and I were just friends. We both saw other people. You've never mentioned you had anyone else in your life, Mike. Why do you think I'm angry with the mayor? Your dream. It sounded like the mayor's wife was plotting with Jimmy to murder her husband. Doctor, I think you're wrong about my feelings for Rita. Well, maybe. But that's about all the time we have today. Give some more thought to what we discussed. And if your headaches return, see me. Here comes Jack. Guess what? I have a photo of Mrs. Ramirez paying off Jimmy for killing her husband. Yeah, 
I don't think it's a coincidence that his name keeps turning up. What do you mean? What's the connection between Jimmy and the sheriff? Well, Jimmy told you he had the inside goods on the sheriff. I guess he was talking about the bribery charges. What's the connection between Jimmy and Doc Larson? Jimmy's name was listed in Doc Larson's little black book. Knowing Jimmy, he probably helped round up girls for the good doctor. What's the connection between Jimmy and the mayor? There isn't one. Oh, wait a second. He's very fond of the mayor's wife, Melissa. So you think he was angry that Rita was a homewrecker? Hey, I'm angry that a married man was fooling around with her. Well, before you go ripping somebody's head off, I'd check out their story. On my way over here, I saw Jimmy go into the pool hall. Why don't you go have a man-to-man -man with him? I've been suspicious of you for some time, Jimmy Gardner. The liquor store robbery, the Lindbergh kidnapping, but now I'm convinced you murdered Rita Scanlon. Listen good, Slim. I'm getting real sick of your crazy talk. Now shut your mouth before I shut it for you. You don't frighten me none, Jimmy Gardner. This here letter proves you're a killer. They're gonna lock you up and throw away the key. That does it, you loon. You stuck your nose where it doesn't belong, and now you're gonna pay for it. Hey, stop picking on him, Jimmy. Put that gun away. Let's see if you're brave enough to take me on, man to man. Oh. Ah. You okay, Mikey boy? What... what happened? I had a feeling you were spoiling for a fight with Jimmy, and I thought you could use some help. Looks like I was right. You can thank me later. I've got to run. Wait a minute. Where did Slim run off to? Are you okay, Slim? Oh, come in, Mr. Dawson. Thanks for helping me out back there. I'm sorry I couldn't have done more. I guess I'm not much of a fighter. What are you talking about, Mr. Dawson? Why, you knocked Jimmy Gardner out cold. I think you need glasses, Slim. I wasn't the one who saved you. Some people think my head's a little screwed up, but my eyes are fine. From what I could see, you were a real hero in there. What was this evidence you said you have against Jimmy? It's a love letter written by Rita to Melissa's husband. It seems she was having a fling with our honorable mayor. How did you get a hold of this letter? Oh, I snatched it out of Melissa's purse earlier today. I knew she was involved in some kind of conspiracy and I just needed a motive. Gosh darn if I didn't find one. What first led you to suspect Melissa? I've seen Melissa go into the pool hall regularly the past few weeks. Now, that isn't the proper place for a mayor's wife, is it? So I've been keeping my eye on her. I don't understand what Jimmy has to do with all of this. The night before the high school reunion, I saw Melissa give Jimmy a big wad of money. 
That seemed mighty suspicious, especially after how Jimmy turned Mr. Ramirez into a crispy critter. You know that Jimmy caused the Ramirez fire? Don't act so surprised, Mr. Dawson. Most people just think I'm a crazy fool, so they tend to talk a little carelessly when I'm around. I've heard it all. And then some. You know, Slim, there is a lot of evil in the world. You got that right, Mr. Dawson. That's why I prefer my own delusions. Thanks for helping to clear my name. Next time you have a conspiracy theory, I'm gonna listen. My pleasure, but I'm going to give it a rest for now. My fillings are picking up radio transmissions from outer space again, and I'm starting to get a headache. Do you mind if I hand the letter and Jimmy's gun over to the sheriff, Slim? Go ahead. Sheriff Butler wouldn't pay it any attention if I gave them to him. He didn't even believe me the time I found Jimmy Hoffa's grave. Take them. They're yours. Jimmy's gone. I've got to find him before he kills more people for the generator. Is the trigger mechanism of this gun of interest to you? Let me see that. Well, is it something you can use? Why, yes. This will do quite nicely. It's a trade, then. Here, let me attach your biomechanical arm. I guess the trigger must have jammed, but I hit every target, so I think I still earned a prize. You can have your prize, but I don't want to see your face around here again. That was some pretty nice shooting there, Dawson. You seem awfully handy with a weapon. Oh, hello, Sheriff Butler. What brings you down to the carnival? Just checking out the area, looking for suspects. I'm not surprised to find you here. Suspects? For what? Rita's murder? No, not for Rita's murder. For the murder of Mayor Fleming. Mayor Fleming's been murdered? You 
been anywhere else in the park during the last hour? I don't know anything about it. What happened? The FBI is examining the body right now. I'm on the lookout for suspects who've been to the park during the last hour. Who do you think did it? Like I said before, Dawson, you're my number one suspect. Nothing you've said or done convinces me otherwise. Maybe you knocked off Mayor Fleming because of Rita. Or maybe you had other reasons. I didn't do it, Sheriff. It was Jimmy Gardner. Jimmy Gardner? Don't make me laugh. He's a two-bit punk, not some psycho cutthroat. I've got a letter implicating Jimmy. Melissa hired him to kill Rita for having an affair with the mayor. All right, Dawson, I'll talk to Jimmy about this letter. But stick around in case the feds or I have any more questions for you. Looks like a fun game. I used to play horseshoes with my dad. I usually beat him, but I think he liked to let me win. Ticket. Yeah, hold on to your ticket. You need it for readmission into the carnival. How much does it cost to play this game? I don't want your money. The game's free. Okay, what do I do? I just toss a ring around that metal pole over there. It's so simple a child could do it. I'd like to play this game. Yeah, be careful. The ring's heavy. Bullseye, a winner! I better go see Dr. Sims. Why, hello, Mike. I'm surprised to see you again so soon. I think I need another session of hypnotism, Dr. Sims. Why, Mike? What's wrong? Didn't you hear? Mayor Fleming's been murdered in the park. I heard, Mike. Doc Larson told me that he had performed the autopsy. Doc Larson? That pervert! Why do you say that, Mike? Are you jealous of the relationship he enjoyed with Rita? It's not that. I told you before I wasn't jealous of Rita. Of course, Mike. Of course. I'm worried there's going to be more murders, Dr. Sims. The whole town shares your concern, Mike. It's my fault, Dr. Sims. I know who the killer is, but I let him escape. Don't blame yourself, Mike. Capturing criminals is the responsibility of the police. You don't understand. The Keeper of the Scrolls chose me to stop the Ancients. Mike, you really must resist these fantasies about the Dark World. There's no shapeshifter going around and murdering people. I think I need more hypnosis. I agree, Mike. Let's try another session. Look at the spot on the ceiling. Relax. Close your eyes. 
Welcome back, folks. Our guest today on Let's Make a Death is Mike Dawson. How are you, Mike? Okay, I guess. What's going on, Paul? It's your lucky day, Mike. You get to choose one of three holograms and learn something about this mystery you're trying to solve. Which hologram will it be? Uh, hologram number one, please. Hologram number one is the lovely Rita Scanlon, alive and well. Mike, you're so wrapped up in your own little world. You didn't kill me. You know, you really ought to read more. I could have helped you like I did Mr. Ramirez, the mayor, and Doc Larson. Ouch! Not quite the reunion you hoped for, was it? Choose another hologram. Hologram number two. Hologram number two is the not-so-honorable Mayor Fleming. You know, Mike, you and Rita just didn't have the right kind of interest. You just didn't click the way she and I did, if you know what I mean. Oh, boy, I think I got the picture. And so did you, Mike, when you found those photos of Rita in the mayor's car. I bet that got your engine running. Choose another hologram. Hologram number three. Hologram three is a real smooth operator, Doc Larson. Rita didn't have much time for you, Mike, but she somehow found time to bring me my medical textbooks. You don't suppose that got her interested in playing doctor, do you? Are you jealous, Mike? That's what you get for sneaking into my office and stealing my little black book. That must have been a bitter pill to swallow. I'm sorry, Mike. There's no prize for you in any of the holograms. But we do have a lovely parting gift for you. All the hardware you'll ever need. <laughs> a beautiful set of steak knives. Sharp enough to cut again and again and again. <laughs> Mike, are you awake? How do you feel now? God, what a dream I had. It was awful. What did you dream about this time? You were mumbling, but I couldn't really understand the words. was in my dream. She told me Jimmy Gardner didn't kill her. Did she tell you who did kill her? If Jimmy Gardner isn't the killer, it might have been Paul Cooper. Mike, I think you're becoming obsessed with these murders. I want you to go home and rest. Try to get your mind off them. It's all so confusing. Maybe Jack can make sense of it. I really wish you'd stop seeing this Jack fellow. I think he's bad for you. Damn it, Dr. Sims. Stop bad-mouthing Jack. Please, Mike. Calm down. I'm sorry, Dr. Sims. Jack's my only friend. I can see that Jack's a sensitive subject for you. Let's not talk about him now. What else did you get out of your dream? feeling a little better. At least my headache's gone again. Well, that's good to hear, Mike. How do you feel about the mayor's death now? It was a terrible thing, Doctor. The killer must be found. It was terrible, Mike. 
But right now, I'm concerned about how events are affecting you. In particular, your dreams. Don't worry, Dr. Sims. I think I'm getting better. I'd like to go now. Very well, Mike. Now just go home. Okay, Dr. Sims. I'll try. I think it's for the... Excuse me. Mike Dawson? Special Agent Gannon, FBI. May I have a word with you? What do you want? You're not leaving until I get some answers from you. What do you want to know? When was the last time you saw Mayor Fleming? Alive. You think I killed the mayor, don't you? I don't think it, Dawson. I know it. We ran a background check on you. Our behavioral science people peg you as a psycho. But I found a letter that proves Jimmy Gardner killed Rita. I gave it to Sheriff Butler. Butler's off the case. I'm in charge now. And as for your friend Jimmy Gardner, he's in the hospital. Coma. Furthermore, Doc Larson places the mayor's time of death sometime after you attacked Gardner, killer. Larson's lying. He was involved with Rita. He's the psycho. Right, Dawson. Everybody's a psycho but you. No wonder Rita dumped you. Is that why you killed her? I loved Rita. I didn't touch her. Oh yeah? It sure sounds like everyone else did. She dressed up in leather for the mayor. She was doing the nasty with Doc Larson. But nothing for poor Mike. Makes you mad enough to kill, doesn't it? Uh, uh. Oh no! I think I'm really in trouble. I need to talk to Jack. Jack. I hit an FBI agent. Smart move, Ace. Why'd you do that? I got angry. He made some comment about Doc Larson and I just flipped out. I can't blame you, Mike. The idea of him and Rita together would drive me crazy too. Not to mention Mayor Fleming. The mayor's been murdered. His head was cut off just like Rita's. What? Another murder? Maybe Mrs. Ramirez was right. Maybe Rita got what she deserved. Hey, none of that talk, Mikey boy. It takes two to tango, you know? Both Mayor Fleming and Doc Larson are Class A leches. I'd like to clobber them myself. By the way, thanks for helping me back at the pool hall. No problemo. I had a feeling you'd try to take Jimmy's head off. So, did he fess up? Jimmy's not our man. He was unconscious when the mayor was killed. That's real bad news, Mikey boy, because I'm fresh out of leads. I think you're going to be swinging a sledgehammer the rest of your life. Sledgehammer? Wait a second. Paul Cooper, the hardware store owner. He's involved in all this somehow. I just had a dream about him. Man, you're losing it. Instead of grasping at straws, you should be putting your affairs in order. Look, I'll be a character witness for you at the trial, but I think I've outlived my usefulness here. Take care, Mike. Verified as privileged worker. Access permitted. Talk Larson. 
can't exactly say he didn't deserve his fate, but there's only one more head left to go. If the shapeshifter isn't Jimmy, who could it be? Paul? There's an empty socket here. It looks like... It doesn't want to go into the slot. It doesn't want to go into the... machine stop working. Door must weigh a ton. Is the thick metal for keeping people out or keeping something in? There's some kind of electronic lock on this door. I can't open it.
the design room for my first visit to the dark world. This chair makes me feel very uneasy. What an odd sensation. I know that these are the scrolls of wisdom. I'm as certain of that as I've been of anything. Still watering your lawn, Paul? Yes. The grass is real thirsty. Can't seem to get enough water. What's up? I keep wandering back to Rita's old neighborhood. You must miss her. I was with her that night. I was probably the last person to see her alive. Is that so? You must feel terrible. Like I said before, I didn't know her too well. We just waved to each other. Well, I just stopped by to say hi. Take care. See ya. All right, Mike. Take it easy. I gotta get this lawn watered. What happened to the water? Oh man, this is too weird for words. There's no doubt that Paul is crazy enough to be a killer. Now I have to find some hard evidence to connect him to the murders. Paul's bedroom looks fairly normal. In fact, it kind of resembles my own room. Scuff marks. This bookcase must have been moved across the floor recently. A secret passage. Oh my God. Paul's house contains a dark world portal. I was right. He is the shapeshifter. What kind of crap is this? The book's open to a chapter about the other world. It seems that the spirits of the dead, whoever they are, are planning to send a messenger to cleanse the prime world. I've seen this creature before, in my dreams. Paul must be a devil worshipper too. This place is giving me the creeps. The sign of the four. The four what? Maybe I don't want to know. Hey, this picture.
picture is of Paul and Rita. And there's Mayor Fleming and Doc Larson. They're all wearing black robes. What's going on here? Keep your unclean hands off my things, Mike. You're here to stop the messenger from coming, aren't you? Well, then you shall be the first to be cleansed. Why did you try to kill me? I'm sorry, Mike. The voices told me to kill you. They said you were dangerous and must be stopped. What were these voices you heard? The spirits of the dead. We contacted them a year and a half ago during a seance I conducted. They wanted... things. Who's we? Rita and myself at first. Once we realized we were in contact with the spirits of the dead, we formed the Other World Cult so that we could maintain permanent contact. I saw a photo of you, Rita, Mayor Fleming, and Doc Larson. It was taken one night during a ceremony when we were all still alive. The four of us were the Other World Cult. Is that what all this occult stuff is about? Seances, contacting the dead? Yes. I've always been obsessed with occult science. That's why I formed the Other World Cult. I so wanted to make contact with my mother. She died when I was a child, you know. What kinds of things did the voices want? They wanted us to worship them. They taught us a ceremony. We used it and, though we didn't realize it, we became their slaves. What else did the voices tell you? They told us to prepare for the coming of the messenger. He will arrive any day now and cleanse the world. It has been foretold. We have seen it in our dreams and we have prepared our souls. What do you mean you prepared your souls? Don't you see? All three murder victims were members of our other world cult. The killer has taken us first because our minds are already prepared. You mean to tell me you aren't the serial killer? Of course not, Mike. I could never have done such things. Only one as great and pure as the messenger can perform such deeds. I knew my time would come soon. Paul, you're starting to look awfully pale. Everything's growing dark. Oh my god, I killed him! Paul was obviously the shapeshifter. I don't care what he said. But who's going to believe me without any proof? The police will just say that I was jealous of him too. One thing's for sure. I've got to get out of here before someone finds me with a body. sells all kinds of hardware. No wonder Paul is so screwy. Dusty. No one's used the scale in a few days. Uh-oh. I better get out of here.
That should keep Deputy Brown busy for a while. There's no one guarding Rita's house now. knowing that she's dead. There's a letter here. It's in Rita's handwriting. Dear Mom, not much happening lately. I went out with Mike Dawson the other night. He's a nice guy, but he has some emotional problems. In fact, he's starting to act like a sick puppy around me and I'm afraid I'm gonna hurt him. Bitch. She was never really interested in me. She was just toying with me. In a few minutes, I'm off to my reading group meeting across the street at Paul Cooper's house. Now he's somebody I'm really attracted to. Tall, handsome, and good at fixing things around the house. I'm glad I killed that creep. Well, gotta run. Paul gave me a ticket for a free psychic reading at the carnival. I'll give it a try this weekend and let you know what the future holds for me. Kiss Dad for me. Love, Rita. Ticket for a free psychic reading. I hope Rita didn't already use it because I don't have a clue about where to go from here. I've never been in Rita's bedroom before. It's not what I imagined it would look like. The decor is so odd. It's locked. You thought you had everything pretty much figured out, didn't you, Mikey boy? Well, I'd stop while I was ahead if I were you. The truth can be very ugly. This card entitles the bearer to a special psychic reading from Pandora. I found one of your business cards in Rita Scanlon's house. Let me see that. What role does this play in my future, Pandora? Let me see that card. Ah, why didn't you tell me you were one of the Illuminati? This entitles you to a special reading. Mikey, there are no monsters in the closet. There's nothing there but an old dusty mirror. But I'll tell you what, I'll lock this closet forever so that nothing can get through it. 
I have an invisible key to the closet. Now watch. Now I'm locking the closet. Poof! It's gone. The monsters won't be able to come through the closet. Now try to go back to sleep, dear. I feel like such an idiot. All these years thinking my closet was locked. Who knows what's inside it? You do. Why didn't you ever tell me that my closet door was never really locked? Oh my goodness, Mike, that was years ago. Don't tell me you've been afraid of your closet since then. I'm going out, Mom. See you later. All right. See you later, Mike. The fortune teller was right. This closet was never really locked after all. So that's what's inside. A mirror. Could this be another portal into the dark world? Why, this is a dark world bedroom. Odd. It kind of resembles my own room. That could only be the Sword of Justice. This must be the Shapeshifter's home. This looks like the shoebox I keep my good shoes in. My shoes and my mom's butcher knife. They're covered in blood. This bed seems designed to encourage nightmares. I'm back in my own kitchen! But I didn't pass through any portal. What do you know about your missing butcher knife? Here, Mike. This will explain everything. This can't be real. Oh, Mommy, I hope you're okay. That's Rita's head. I must be hallucinating. Rita, I thought you were dead. I'm dead, but have not yet departed. Unless you act soon, all of humanity will suffer a fate far worse than mine. I visited your murder site. I found your reunion ticket. I didn't lose my ticket, Mike. That was dropped by my murderer. You mean the shapeshifter attended our reunion? Mike, don't you see? 
My ticket was serial number 656. The one the murderer dropped was 655. The two tickets were bought at the same time. Are you saying the shapeshifter invited you to the reunion too? Your jealousy is clouding your mind again, Mike. That was always the problem between us, and it will lead to your downfall. I don't understand what's happening here. Mike, you poor innocent fool, you are being used and don't even realize it. But you have a chance to redeem yourself by destroying the behemoth. How can I destroy the behemoth? You can kill it only with the sword, but you must hurry, Mike. While the behemoth is still in the dark world, it is vulnerable. Once it enters the normal world, it will become invincible. The sword is powerful enough to kill the behemoth? Yes, but you must use the sword before it reaches the portal to the normal world. Once the behemoth crosses over, it will grow powerful enough to destroy all of humanity with a single blow. How did you learn all of this, Rita? My mind is connected to the ancient spaceship through the power generator. While they sleep, I hear their dreams, and their dreams become our fate. How much time do I have? The portal in the adjoining room is too small for the behemoth to pass through. Once it hatches, it will head straight for the portal in the maze, and it is hatching even as we speak. Mike, if you truly do care about me, please don't let me die with so much blood on my hands. Stop the behemoth from reaching the normal world. I must leave now. Bye, Mike. Now I'm back in the dark world. I'm sure I didn't pass through a portal this time. Perhaps time and space are warped here. This chair makes me feel very uneasy. This toilet really does look like a throne. This toilet really does look... I've got to get back to the power center and stop the behemoth from hatching. Matrix verified as privileged worker. Access permitted. That's Paul! He wasn't the shapeshifter after all. The incubator has burst open from the inside. The behemoth is hatched. I've got to get to the portal. Leading from the incubator to the maze and the portal. I've got to reach the portal before the behemoth gets there. The 
There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me and this. I need to find a path leading to. There's a mirror between. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path leading to. There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a mirror between me and this. There's a mirror between me and this room. Mike Dawson chose the wrong path and was not able to reach the portal in time to stop the behemoth from crossing the barrier. Once it came into contact with the normal world, the behemoth grew and grew until it enveloped the planet the humans call Earth. It sucked the very life force from the planet and renewed the energies of its masters, the ancients for another eon. All is lost. All is lost. I've got to reach the portal before the... I need to find a path leading to... I need to find a path leading to this... There's a mirror between me and the... I need to find a path leading to this room. I need to find a path leading to... A mirror. There's a path here. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me and this room. There are two hinges along the side. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path. Mike Dawson. I've got to reach the portal before. I need to find a path leading to. I can't leave the maze before I stop. I need to find. There's a mirror between me and this. I need to find a path leading to this. A mirror. There are two hinges along the side of the I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path. There's a mirror between me and the there's a mirror between me and the Mike. I've got to reach the portal before. I need to find a path lead. A mirror. There's a path here. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me and this room. A mirror. A mirror. A mirror. A mirror. A mirror. A mirror. I need to find a path leading to this room. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path leading to. I need to find a path leading to this room. 
There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path. I need to find a path leading to this. There's a mirror between me and this. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me and this room. My. I need to choose. I need to find a path lead. I've got to reach the portal before the behe- There's a mirror between me and the- I'm not leaving until I destroy the power generator. There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a path here. I need to find a path leading to... There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path leading to. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path. There's a mirror between me and the. I need to find a path leading to. There's a mirror between me and the. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path lead. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me and this room. I need to find a path leading to. There's a mirror between me and the. I need to find a path lead. There's a mirror between me and the. There's a mirror between me and this room. There's a mirror between me and this room.
Michael, you've done it. You've defeated the ancients. You have saved our people and yours. Michael, Michael. Hey, wake up, Mikey boy. Hey, wake up, Mikey boy. You've been out of it for a little while. What happened to Dr. Sims? He's been stabbed. You don't remember, Mikey boy? We killed him. He was getting in the way. What do you mean, we killed Dr. Sims? Don't you get it, Mikey boy? You and me, we're both one and the same. What are you talking about? Wait a minute. I get it. You're the shapeshifter. You're wrong again, Mikey boy. In case you haven't figured it out, I don't exist at all. I'm you, and you are me, and we're all together, get it? <laughs> no, I don't get it. How can you and me be the same person? I'm your dark world counterpart, Mikey. A manifestation of your own sick mind. If you don't believe me, grab the knife and try to kill me. Come on, Mikey boy, give it a try. Too late. I should have never let myself be fooled by that letter Dawson gave me. Oh, I don't know about you, but I feel sick. I've never seen anything so horrible. Oh, looks like Mike off the doctor and then off himself. What a mess. Well, at least it's all over now. I still can't believe it. Mike Dawson, a serial killer. He was sure busy the last few hours. Killed Mayor Fleming, Doc Larson, Paul Cooper, and his psychiatrist all in one day. One thing's for sure. I'm gonna be having a few nightmares myself over this one. <laughs> 